one. We are very honored to have Kanaga with us this evening and he's going to say a few words about painting the man and the world and about whatever he wants to talk about. So I'll pass it on to, to you, Kanaga. Thank you. <coughs> I, I guess there are as many of you there who have known Eng Teng and who are in your own ways have been close to him um, throughout his artistic life and perhaps sometimes even before. Um, and I'm really extremely happy to be in the midst of such a constellation of people and I feel at home in that in that uh, in that gathering um, I I have known and worked with Eng Teng for oh since 1975 76 uh, at first intermittently occasionally and then when Dory and I moved to Onan Road, uh, we met very frequently because Juchet Place was just an eight-minute cycle ride from where I was to his place. And there were times when I rode past his house without really intending to visit him, just going aimlessly in the neighborhood. And there was anything in the bending over the little fish pond that he had in the corner of the garden or looking at the frangipani tree and we stood and talked over the fence not necessarily going in because i was en route somewhere else he 106 juchet place and there are there are some of you there was both home a social a social juncture a studio and as far as I can make out open virtually all day to everybody um, and he certainly was open to the use of, of his facilities he conducted classes in ceramics uh, and I believe he also had constant visitations by people, by school children wanting to know more about sculpture, about materials. And I have never known anything to be anything but generous and open. And generous with what he knew, generous with how he did things, and generous with his time. And um, on the occasions when we had to do work on a certain project and the kind of work that I was involved with him had to do with writing, um, he was extremely efficient in collating and gathering whatever materials that he had, securing more if I, if I needed them and very confessional in many ways. Uh, the one thing that he was never ever confessional about was his personal life. And I, I don't know whether anybody knew anything very much about his personal life at all. Um, he, he kept it discreetly screened, not, not, not adamantly or vigilantly, but very discreetly. And uh, with the exception of his early childhood and the disability, the, the, the physical and health disability that he suffered, uh, that was the only occasion when he divulged anything about his condition. And then towards the end of his life too, I think for the most part, he said very little. And when the time for him to go went, I think it caught everybody by surprise, the time. Not that 
I mean, any time anybody goes is always a surprise. But I think in the case of Eng Ping, there was no, there was very little premonition of what was going on. Uh, while 106 Juchet Place was open, and the only person, in, a member of his family whom one encountered was his mother, who was always present, smiling, hardly said anything, uh, was there when we talked, went on, and was not bothered by any one of us, and we were not too bothered by her being there either, although her presence was keenly felt. Um, there was his private residence, which was across, 106A. I gather very few had access to that. And when you did, and I did have access to that on a handful of occasions, it was two-tiered. You went up a flight of stairs and there was the, the, the landing. And as soon as you entered, the landing was one of the most magnificent paintings executed by Eng Teng. And very few realized what a superb painter he was of a still life, which I think was his pride because he had mounted it on an easel and it was there as soon as you climbed up the stairs. And behind that were two pictures. One which I think he set them up to show the kind of company he desired to keep artistically. Behind that picture on the wall was a portrait of Eng Teng by Liu Kang. And next to that, so you, you can see the, the luminaries that he wished to be. And next to that was a still life by Georgette Chen. Of course, Georgette was someone who was supremely special to Eng Teng. I think she was almost like a surrogate mother to him, who advised him, counseled him, shaped his thinking. And it was Georgette who prompted him to embark upon his studies of ceramics. Um, he was going to take up sculpture, but she suggested ceramics. And then on a loft just above that he had built was his private quarters. And there was another flight of steps going up there. And, uh, and you could see that it was sealed off. And, and no one got to that. And in that, in that private apartment was his prized collection of his own ceramics, ceramic ware of his teachers from England, from Farnham especially. Uh, one or two wares by Hamada. I think he had them too, which is almost priceless. And uh, kind of mementos. Um, although he, he, he was to me, and, and you, you have your impressions, uh, very serene, collected, I always felt that Eng Teng had a kind of a steely interior. He was extremely determined and he was quietly a very serious warrior. He was always worried about things. He, he fussed about things, he, he talked about things and Always, always wanting to do something different, something perfect, something better. But all these were held close to his chest, to his heart. He, he, he didn't talk a little, not that much about it. The, the most um, extensive time that I spent with him was when he decided to make that donation of his collection, of works of his collection to NUS Museum. And in NUS Museum is the largest, single largest collection of works by Eng Teng. And uh, I, he, he invited me to curate, curate the show, curate the collection, and write the first lengthy monograph on him, which I did. It took, took us about two years to do that. It was the first monograph that I wrote on an artist in Singapore after my return to Singapore from, from Penang, from Malaysia where I was working. And 
it was a very nerve-wracking thing. How how do I do? How do I talk about a single life? On the one hand, singularly, and on the other hand, also in the company of uh, the the collegiate ship, collegiality of his work, which meant that I had to excavate other things. Um, he was he was. I've I've never seen anything. I, I've seen him irritable, but I've never seen anything short of temper. I, I, I've never seen him raise his voice. I, I've never heard him raise his voice. I'm not saying that therefore he is emotionless. No, on, on the contrary. I think his works are highly charged with emotion and other attributes to it. Um, I, of course, I, I regard him as an artist immensely great esteem but I think I cherish even more my friendship with him even more deeply even more enduringly this, this dear man has put together here I think uh, Chai Hyang has written a has, has written a an extremely articulate moving and a detailed account of the birth of this this assembly here. So I'm I'm not going to try and summarize it because that'll be a travesty of of Chai's writing his poetry there. Um, it has come about because of a meeting of several minds and bodies, of course. Uh, but in the end, I I think. This is here because of one man, Subin. And uh, I don't really know of your relationship with Eng Teng, but right now it doesn't matter so much because it, is a, it, it strikes me as a crystallization of your immense regard for a human being. And the quest for making this has been long, has been arduous, has encompassed the whole art world in Singapore. And somehow it it's now takes its root literally because he had to uproot a tree from here to plonk this here. And the first time we, we came in here and looked at this, and I thought, yeah, it's austere. <laughs> it's uh, decidedly phallic. <laughs> uh, of course. And it's very much tree-like too. So it's both artifice and nature, I think, coming together. And then it is surrounded by Subin's picturing of Ing Teng. So in my view, this, this whole thing is as much about Subin as it is about Ing Teng. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. To, to Ing Teng. Yeah. 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 Yeah.